Well, boys, the saga is over. Two sagas coming to an end yesterday, or at least one of them coming to an end, and the other approaching its end very, very quickly. Today we're talking about Nikolai Goldobin and Reed Boucher as we say goodbye to two Vancouver Canucks players and former prospects whom the Vancouver Canucks fanbase was indeed very, very hyped for. We had the news break on Twitter yesterday for Nikolai Goldobin as he just straight up signed a contract with a KHL team at CSKA Moscow. The 24-year-old forward signed a unilateral contract for two years with CSKA Moscow. Now, immediately after hearing this, I was like, okay, you know what? That's fine. Goldie, absolutely go out there, get your money, See what you can do at the KHL level. I have no doubt that this kind of player is going to excel at that kind of hockey. But then, just a few minutes later, Rick Dollywall posted up this tweet over here. I'm hearing that Reed Boucher is close to signing a one-year deal with the avant-garde Omsk in the KHL too. The Canucks have given Boucher permission to get out of his current contract. Most likely, Reed Boucher will not be available to be a black ace for the Vancouver Canucks. So there you have it. One saga done, another one really close to being done. And with all the news that Sven Berchi was also supposed to be on the trade block as well, this could be a very, very big hit to the Utica Comets forward core and their team as a whole next season. But... Before we get into the comments and all the other stuff that still remains on the team, let's talk a little bit about these two players. Nikolai Goldobin was a guy that the Vancouver Canucks fans were so, so excited for. Not because he was just a young Russian prospect that the Canucks had the potential to actually develop into a real-time player, but because he's one of the only prospects in the past few years, pretty much, that the Vancouver Canucks actually traded for. When it comes to prospects that the Canucks see value in within their system. Over the years, you've had guys like Horvat. You've had guys like Vertanen, Yolevi, Pedersen, Hughes, not to mention the other later round picks like the Gadjeviches, the Linz, the Lockwoods, the Gaudets. They're all players at the Canucks draft. This team almost never acquires valuable prospects via trades. And in the span of like two or three days in 2017, Jim Benning did that by trading Alex Burrows to the Ottawa Senators for Jonathan Dalian, and he traded Yannick Hansen to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Nikolai Goldolvin as well. And Goldie at the time was three years removed from being drafted, and he was just under a point-per-game player in 46 games played for the San Jose Barracuda. He suited up for the Canucks, had three goals in 12 games played, and Canucks fans were like, yo, this guy honestly has some skill. That was always the sentiment with Goldie, that he has some really good hands, really good offensive talent. He got snake bitten here and there, but it was his play away from the puck and in his own zone that didn't give Travis Green the full authority to go, yeah, you know, I trust you, you're a top six forward on this team. It's everything around his offensive game that held him back from being allowed to exhibit that offensive talent in the NHL. And as a result, playing a few games here and there with the Vancouver Canucks, sure, he had 14 points in 38 games in 2018, and 27 points in 63 games in 2019, when Elias Pettersson made his debut with the team and played with Goldie. It's just, everything else around his offensive game wasn't good enough. And he was actually pretty good with Pettersson, I would say that. They're two really nice offensive pieces that complemented each other really well, it's just that Pedersen's work ethic and his overall drive was so much greater than Goldie's that, at times, it looked like Pedersen was just overshadowing him out there. The offensive talent complemented each other from both of these players, but at times, it just seemed like Goldie was passengering himself. Of course, though, that's not a fair criticism because Pedersen is Pedersen, he's really, really, really good. 
But Goldie, going into 2020, we already know what happened. He played another year with the system, this time in the AHL, and he was just under a point per game there as well. He was one of the better players in the AHL this past season, as a very slick, offensively-minded playmaker who could set up his teammates with some really nice passes. And we saw that talent present itself again and again. It's just that now, he's going back home, and what he is, is pretty much just an NHL-caliber talent who didn't have the tools to stick around in the NHL for a long time. This guy's gonna get points in the KHL. They play a very possessive style of hockey over there, they don't like to dump and chase, they have more space out there which would give Goldie the room to do his magic. You can call me out right here, I think Goldobin's gonna be a point per game player if not much better in the KHL, especially with a good team like CSKA Moscow. As the top comment here on Arcanux says on the Goldobin is leaving post, Stay gold, Goldie boy. Ah, oh, man, that novel. Ugh. Memories of grade 8. But we also have to talk about Reed Boucher, who has had a very, very weird story coming to the Vancouver Canucks. He wasn't a guy that the Canucks traded for, but he's a guy that they picked up on waivers. Boucher was initially drafted by the New Jersey Devils in 2011, and after six years, he got waived by the Devils, and he got claimed. He was claimed by the Nashville Predators off of waivers in 2016. Then a few weeks later after the Nashville Predators claimed Boucher on waivers, he got sent on waivers again by the Predators, and he got claimed again by the Devils. And then two days after that, the Devils put him on waivers once more, where the Vancouver Canucks swooped in and tagged him up and were like, yeah, no, he's ours now. So like... This waiver wire thing that happened three years ago was really weird, and a lot of people remember that as like, okay, what the heck, this guy's gotta be exhausted from all that traveling from New Jersey to what was supposed to be Albany at the time, instead getting yeeted, nope, you're coming to Nashville. Then a month later, oh, you know, you're going to Milwaukee, sorry, buddy. And then he gets claimed by New Jersey, okay, no, you're coming to New Jersey again. And then they're like, no, we're gonna send you one waivers, Albany, you go, and then it's Vancouver. And you could see how weird and exhausting that could get for one player. Vancouver eventually did not place him on waivers, they kept him up with the team, but just scratched in the press box so that they wouldn't need to put him through that waiver wire again. Eventually, though, Boucher did play a few games with the Vancouver Canucks, and most Canucks fans would remember that this guy had a knack for scoring goals. A very legitimate NHL-caliber shot was possessed by Boucher, but he just never got the opportunity to showcase that properly because his skating, his offensive awareness, and his speed held him back. He played in the Utica Comets for a few years, was really, really good over there, was an all-star and one of the best goal scorers in the league this past season, and now... He's going to have some time with the Avangard Omsk to show that opportunity off at the KHL level. And if I had to predict for next year what's going to happen, I honestly think Boucher could do some really good damage at the KHL level for the same reasons that Nikolai Goldobin could honestly do some really good damage with the CSKA Moscow team. Avangard Omsk is actually kind of funny because they have a few players that Canucks fans kind of recognize. Last year, they had Sergei Shurikov playing for their team. Yeah, remember that guy? Cody Franzen is also on this team as well, who he's not a Vancouver Canucks guy, but he is an NHL guy as well. Not to mention Vancouver Canucks prospect Artyom Manukian, who was actually over there as well. He didn't play too much last season, but we'll see what happens with him later on down the line. If they're still all there next year, then hey, have that playmaking of Artyom Manukian with a Reed Boucher. Honestly, sounds like a pretty good pairing to me, huh? But that kind of wraps up this video here today that we have on these two players. Boucher and Goldie were very, very good Utica Comets in the past few years, and their potentials as NHL players certainly did exist. It's just, the Canucks, the teams, they couldn't really do much to bring that full-time NHL caliber athlete out of these players. And I've been high on Goldie for years. Back when I was in high school, grade 12, making my prospect report videos, talking about Dolan and Pedersen and all that stuff, Goldie was one of the ones that I was so excited for because he was so close. And then he made a video talking about how he is still close, and then how he was here, and now he's gone. Stay gold, Goldie boy. That is what I gotta say to him. As for Reed Boucher, he was a little bit older, so there definitely is a limited window when it comes to his career in comparison to Goldie's, but this guy could seriously be a very good KHL goal-scoring threat. So if the Avangard Omsk are able to capitalize on that, then 
hey, this could be a really, really good eye-opening moment for both of these players towards their hockey futures. So, Goldobin, Boucher, I wish these two the best. Vancouver Canucks fans, let's leave our condolences down in the comments below for these two players. I hope you enjoyed this video. Social that's Rolls 99, and bye.